we have the, la the last talk now. Just, uh, uh, just in very quickly, if you could just sum up the yes, highlights you, of your you. talk, and I we'll have wind only up. the highlights. Thank, sir. You. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, my SK. Thank you, Dr. Mr. Monik. Uh, these are certain case scenarios that I would like to present with uh, Kasia. It's a very beautiful tool with a good resolution, 16 mm scans, swept source OCT, where it helps in cornea cases, especially. Uh, to decide between the depth of uh, scarring, the dystrophies, and decide you between uh, selecting between KPs and uh, anterior lamellar keratoplasties. It helps in your other lamellar keratoplasties like uh, DSEC in assessing your uh, post-operative uh, complications, your progression to monitor your patient follow-ups, where uh, this was a patient with DSEC. It, uh, after rebubbling, especially in cases of keratoconus, it works very well. Like here, this is a case of keratoconus, severe keratoconus, and you can see the epithelial hypertrophy in the center. So uh, on just on the topography, it will give you a very good thickness, but if you see uh, at on the anterior segment OCD, the stroma is actually very uh, less. So it won't uh, help you with a cross-linking, and here is when you need to take a chance whether this patient should be converted to a keratoplasty or can be continued on scleral lenses and cross-linking is definitely not the choice. Uh, Kasi also gives you a very good epithelial mapping uh, on the down right of the uh, both the maps you can see there is a concentric epithelial uh, donut pattern being formed. These are all the cases of uh, keratoconus and very early keratoconus also these kind of concentric uh, thickening can be seen and this actually helps you in uh, assessing the keratoconus progression, uh, assessing the epithelium, because epithelium tends to uh, mask the stromal steepening, and it will mask the keratoconus progression by compensating the steepening. So just assessing the epithelial mapping can help you in assessing the progression, and in uh, very subclinical kind of cases where the everything looks fine on uh, four maps, on bad D, on other topographers also, if you just assess the epithelial modeling pattern, the donut pattern, it is very much diagnostic of subclinical KC and can, you can prevent a lot of cases of post LASIK ectasia. This is where I find anterior segment OCT epithelial mapping very, very, very useful. Uh, now this was one very interesting case. Uh, a young lady presented with uh, pain, sudden diminution of vision, swollen eyelids, all features of angle closure, glaucoma, high IOP. On ASOCT, we could s uh, we did an ASOCT and found that the lens thickness was uh, increased and the angles were very narrow. On D scan, we see saw a ciliary effusion, and uh, on taking a history, we found that she was on topiramate for headache. So the topiramate was stopped, and all the anti glaucoma medications were started for her. Uh, she improved uh, the second day a little, and we saw there was a myopic shift due to the cilia choroidal effusion, anterior displacement of the lens iris diaphragm was the main cause for the myopic shift and the angle closure. And uh, she improved within three days, the thickness reduced, angles opened up, by day seven, anti-glaucoma medications were completely stopped and she was shifted on low-dose steroids. And by one month, she came back to 6x vision. These were again two more cases of topiramate-induced angle closure. So anterior segment OCT helps you find the where the problem is, where the etiology is, and it Clearly, it mostly it helps in uh, explaining the patient. You can counsel your patient and the compliance of the patient increases if you tell them what the problem is and it will increase more if you show them what the problem is. So ASOCT helps you very well to uh, for adherence of the treatment of the patient. Um, this was a case of dressmith membrane detachment diagnosed on ASOCT, a case of posterior capsular integrity preoperatively one was is the posterior polar cataract other is the traumatic uh, posterior polar uh, dehiscence so when you know this beforehand you're very well prepared in your or what you're dealing with and you can prevent complications you can be prepared beforehand what all things you need to and you can counsel the patient this also helps you in uh, fake ecoil uh, monitoring the vault assessment um, it also helps in uh, assessing the epithelial map. This was one case uh, from uh, operated overseas, done LASIK. He was again done a PRK followed after that. We had no history why the PRK was done as patient said that he had uh, some residual power and PRK was done. Now he is again complaining of disturbed vision. So uh, we see that there is a uh, simulated image uh, and a lot of abrasions. 
So, but we did not know if the PRK was done, whether flap lifting can be redone for him. He was getting trouble since two years. So that's where the ASOCT helped us in uh, knowing the epithelial thickness. And we knew that now the epithelium is fine, so we can relift the flap and do the treatment for it. And patient really improved a lot just after the topo guided treatment. It helps in customizing scleral contact lens fittings for the beginners. It reduces the time, precise fitting, and it's very good for the beginners to understand how the scleral lens fittings are done. This is one case of brown macrine syndrome, a case of post-traumatic dislocation, sclerolimbal cyst, glaucoma. Mostly I would like to say that is a very beautiful tool. It helps in giving uh, confidence to ourselves, what you're dealing with, so that that confidence can be imparted to your patient. It helps you tracking the response and patient education and counseling, therefore a better compliance. Thank you.